We're looking at the Raspberry Pi GPIO. So this is a way that you can program external devices to do things. All right. So Raspberry Pi, we've looked at it as a microcomputer. We've looked at it as um, something that we could build a retro Pi on so that you can play video games and things Mine like that. Mine cryptocurrency on. Mine cryptocurrency on at nine hashes per second. That's right. And, you know, it, it's, it's a fantastic piece of kit. But you can take it to the next level because there's a 40-pin GPIO on there, which is a whole bunch of pins that you can connect cables to and program what you want those cables to do. Right. So we're going to start with the most simple example tonight that could ever be possible. We're just going to turn on and off a light. But along with that, we're going to kind of learn what we need in order to get started because as we grow as makers, we need to be able to um, have the kit so that right. we're, we're ready to go. Obviously, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi. My kit is a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, I love this guy here. You've seen it on the show from yes. cat5.tv slash maker. Just because it comes with things like bags and bags of many different ohmage resistors, for example. Like it just comes with tons and tons of resistors. You can buy all this stuff separately, but buying the kit as a beginner maker, this just gave me a whole bunch of stuff to get started. I've got uh, various um, capacitors. I've got various um, transistors and switches, all kinds of stuff. You got all I the stuff. A, I got a couple of relays there. So as we grow, we mm -hmm. can start using more and more of this kit. Mm -hmm. So tonight, for example, I needed to pull out some resistors. So I needed a resistor, I needed an LED, I needed a couple of cables, mm -hmm. and I need to be able to program my GPIO to turn on and off this light bulb. Okay. Over the next little while, Category 5 TV is going to be looking more and more at beginner electronics. We've looked at some in the past, and we've really wanted to get going on, uh, on some of the projects that we can do here. And uh, we've done some pretty cool stuff, but that's going to grow over time. And the Raspberry Pi is an interesting one because it's a full Linux computer. Right. I have a question. Yeah. What does GPIO stand for? Oh, Gosh, GPIO. You could yeah. have Googled that as well as I. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. Oh, okay. But that's the pins on a right. Raspberry Pi, for example. Just um, and yes, I had to Google perfect. that because I'm a beginner maker, and I'm okay with that. Right. I just assume you know everything. Like the no. last you no, like, well, bam. No, so don't often, though, in, the, in the tech world, we have acronyms that you just use or short forms, and it, it just becomes part of the lingo. And then you're right. like, oh, what does that I mean? know LED is light emitting diode. Nicely done. Right. Yes. Nicely done. So I, I've got okay. one of those. So with the GPIO, these are all those pins. Remember, there's 40 pins on the Raspberry Pi board. Right. But I want my board to be in this nice little case. It's an Eladuino. I love this case. It's aluminum. I've got a heat sink on the CoPro and the, uh, the CPU mm -hmm. internally there, and it's an aluminum chassis. It keeps it nice and cool with passive cooling, so there's no fans either. But if I want to use a case, mm -hmm. well, now it's really, really tough to get in to do the GPIO, putting things right. on the pins and things like that. So that's where uh, GPIO breakout cable cobbler, for example, would work really well. So I have this, what we call, uh, well, it's, it's a cobbler. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get in here just hey, a sir. little bit closer. So this is a GPIO cable coming out of the side of the case and it's plugged into the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi and inside it looks just like that. Okay? So it's just an extender? Everything from it the inside? Is. Yeah. Just so the uh, inside GPIO has been br basically brought along these cables right. and into this what looks like an old IDE. It's a 40 oh, okay. pin GPIO connector. So then I have the T Cobbler Plus V2.2 and this is available at cat5.tv slash pi, and I love this because part of, you know, doing this is it's really tough to get the right pins, and you need a diagram to figure out what pin is what, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. right? Um, and sometimes if you get it wrong, you can cause damage to either the peripheral you're connecting or the pi itself. Now, one quick question, because it was mm -hmm. just brought up in the chat room, that it looks like the old IDE cables. Is it that really does. It, 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 is it just an IDE cable or is it something totally different? Uh, ID, because I would hate for somebody to go, oh, I'm going to really pull that out like of an one. old computer and no, then it really mess looks up. like one. I seem to recall that IDE though had a, a pin that was um, that was blocked out. Uh, let's see. Yes. So okay. here's so it's not like the same IDE thing. Cable. No, because IDE had a. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I wish that that was a bigger photo. 
Um, no, it looks pretty similar. No, it's 34 pin, but there's a 40 pin. Okay, so I, I don't know the answer to that, but okay. there, that does look like a 40 pin cable. Okay. So maybe they're the same. Which okay. really, hey, if you're a pack rat and you've got some old AT Well, that's the funny computers, thing. I, I do have some at home. Bring one in. Okay. Let's try um, yeah. this cable. I don't know if the pin assignments would be exact or proper. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, but we'll they definitely out. look the same. What the T-Cobbler Plus V2.2 does, though, it's, it, first of all, it's a pre-built board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I didn't have to assemble this cobbler. Um, and what the cobbler does is it allows me to connect to my breadboard for prototyping okay. easily right. without having to run a whole bunch of cables out of the Raspberry Pi. It's just one cable that I plug into the T-Cobbler. Oh, perfect. Okay. okay. So why the T-Cobbler versus like a standard cobbler is now a standard cobbler is going to just get rid of the T part. That's why this one's called a T-Cobbler, right? So that would be a standard cobbler. That's T-Cobbler. The T-Cobbler, because it's got more space, because remember, if you have a, just a normal cobbler, the uh, interface is in the middle here. Right. So there's not a lot of writing on the board. It's really, really tough to see the pins. Nice thing about the T-Cobbler is every single one of these pins is labeled. That's helpful. So you can see the pin number. You can see which ones are 5 volt, 3 volt, ground. It's labeled right on the circuit. Okay. So then you need a breadboard. It came with my kit, cat5.tv slash maker. Um, you just simply plug the T-cobbler into your breadboard and then plug your IDE cable. IDE cable. There I go. Now you're doing it. To me, <laughs> plug your GPIO cable directly into the T-cobbler. And that's all there is to it. So it just works like that. So now my breadboard is set up to be a Raspberry Pi GPIO beast. Right. Okay. So what I've done is I now have the ground going to the negative on my breadboard, and I have um, pin 18. I've got that going down to here. I'm just going to move my laptop for you. And I've got a 220 ohm resistor going to the positive and then an LED. Um, the resistor is so that I don't cause damage to my, uh, to my Raspberry Pi. I don't want to damage the Pi if I draw too much current from the LED. And I used a 220 because I wanted it to be bright enough for you to be able to see tonight. Um, that will just give it a little bit more brightness than, say, a 370 ohm. Um, so let's give it a go. You want to take a look? Yes. All right. So I'm, uh, I've got everything kind of set up. There it is. I've already loaded Python as root. And uh, so I'm, I'm raring to go. So now that I've got this all set up, got my LED here, I've got the uh, pin 18 is the one I'm using, and I've got the ground going to the negative, so I'm set. Now, one question I, I have, sorry, before you go to it, is there a reason why you have them situated on the board that way specifically, or was it just, for somebody who's looking at this going, I don't know how to use a breadboard. Never yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so that they know in case they're trying to replicate sure. this at home. It's, it's tough for me to let, you know what, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to show you what I've done. You don't have to, uh, the way a breadboard works is, and you don't have to copy Robbie's way of doing it exactly. So on the far right here is the negative and it's labeled as such. And then right next to that is the positive. So that's why I'm able to have the, the LED just simply plugged in to negative and positive with the positive being the longer leg of the LED. Okay. Then I've got the ground from the Raspberry Pi GPIO. This is the T cobbler and it shows me that this is the ground. So I've taken that and I've used a lead to take it to the negative. So my ground is now on this entire line of the negative channel. So anything that I plug into the blue See that blue stripe? Anything I plug into that will be connected to the ground on the Raspberry Pi once this is plugged into the GPIO. So then with the yellow cable just up here, because it's on the same horizontal line as the ground, that's why it's plugged in there. You couldn't just throw it anywhere down the line, correct? You could, oh, as, okay. as long as it's touching a contact, because as long as it touches a contact in the negative line, so when it's in this line, it will, it will basically connect to all of the holes that are in this line. Okay, okay? makes sense. On the right-hand side and the left-hand side, where it says positive and negative, positive and negative, it's like that. But this is basically two, two separate sides, so I'm working all on the right-hand side of my board. Okay. So if I, if I take this LED, for example, and I move it down to down here, that is exactly the same connection. Okay. 
it doesn't matter where it is as long as I've got the positive and negative connected. Okay. Okay. Reason I put it up here is just so it's a little more visible on the camera because my laptop gets in the way here on the show. Right. The positive, which is pin 18 on the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is just the one I'm using for the GPIO so that I can program it, that comes, so pin 18 comes out, and I'm using this tether here to go down. I'm just plugging it in anywhere. But on the middle channel here, it goes this way, horizontal. So now anything that I, so I've plugged this in here, anything that I plug in next to it will have the positive. All right. I hope that makes sense. It does. So this is now connected. So this resistor that's next to the red, because it's on the same line that way. Same horizontal line. I know they're, yep. it's really, really fine. But it's right next to it, the, where, where the resistor goes in. So the positive is connected to the resistor on this end. And then the resistor carries that current to the positive here. So then... Th even though it's kind of stretched out on the board, really it's just a big circular loop. You could do this in a little tiny pla space. Right, okay. Absolutely. Um, the reason that I brought it down here was because I didn't want the resistor to accidentally come in contact with, with something else. Or Fair enough. Whatever, right? Sorry, I didn't but, mean to throw you off. I just no, no, I thought in case good. somebody's watching this and they're, tr they're like, why isn't it working? Yeah. That, you know. the, the pin assignment, as far as where I put this, doesn't matter as long as I wire it correctly. So I could put this up here. Yep. Okay. So I've now moved the red up here. So now there is nothing going to the resistor because there's nothing in line with it. Okay. Right. So now I have to take this resistor. I'm going to connect the positive terminal first. And the reason that I do that is what if I accidentally plug it into the negative and then short circuit my board? Yeah, I don't want to do that. don't want to do that. So I've plugged that into the positive terminal. And now I'm going to plug it in to the same line as the red cable. Okay. All right. So it doesn't matter where it is up and down as long as it's in, in the right lineup. Perfect. Okay. No, that makes sense. Cool. All right. All right. So let's plug it in. There we go. So it is hot, baby. All right. And I'm going to jump over to... Python here, which is running as super user. The reason that I need to do that is because um, it, it needs access to the GPIO, which only the super user can do. So I'm going to import um, the capabilities of the Raspberry Pi GPO, GPIO. So I'm going to go import rpi.gpio as GPIO. So just typed exactly as I've shown there. And then we need to set the mode of the GPIO to uh, Broadcom, so set mode GPIO.bcm. These are just kind of, we're just setting up our script. Uh, let's see what I did. Most recent call last, stdn, G, oh, I missed an O, GPIO.set mode GPIO.bcm. That looks a little nicer. And then, now I know that I'm using pin 18, so I need to actually set it up as an output. So I need to go GPIO, which I set up in the first, um, in the first line, dot setup, and I'm going to use pin 18, comma, and we're going to set that as GPIO dot out. Enter. Uh, let's see what that tells me there. Oh, that's so tiny! <laughs> What did I type wrong? GPIO dot setup 18 GPIO dot out GPIO dot setup You guys see what I've done wrong? No, I don't. Uh, possibly space after 18 comma? Or mm -hmm. do you need that? Uh, you don't need it, but it shouldn't matter. What did I type differently? How did I get a typo there? I don't see it, folks. Uh, I don't either. Well, <laughs> now what I need to do is I need to actually tell the output of pin 18 to turn on. So true or false. True, if I did it right. Jeff, can you hit the light switch right behind you? Because that's going to allow us to kind of see. Ah, oh, it's um. dimmer in here. OK. I think it's on. It's on. Okay. Now I'm going to change that to false. That's off. off. Yeah, you can definitely see. On, off, on, off. <laughs> and I don't know what my typo was there. 
I, I just, I don't see it, but <laughs> I'll watch this back and I'll see it. So basically what we've done is we've used that T-Cobbler Plus. You can hit that light again if you like. Um, and then we've used the Python programming language in the mm-hmm. terminal on a Raspberry Pi to be able to turn on and off the light, which essentially what we're actually doing is turning on and off pin 18, right. positive current. So it sends a, a current through pin 18. Right. Uh, so that is the most basic example of what we can do. Now, you know, the next step is, okay, once you've got all the kit, then we can start doing some really exciting stuff. Right. Um, there's a lot of stuff to come. I know NEMS is going to be using the GPIO coming up soon. Really? Which is so that's really cool. looking forward to that as well. So there you have it. Uh, head on over to ca- uh, cat5.tv slash pi for a Raspberry Pi and the T-Cobbler Plus. And if you want to look at the maker kit and all the accessories, cat5.tv slash maker is where you'd want to go. Uh, and check that out. Good times. Awesome. We had one Thank question you. in the chat room. Please. Why is it called a breadboard? Why is it called a breadboard? Yep. Serious question. Once again, you could, you could Google that. What? I could. I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, Why did someone name it a breadboard? I don't know. Well, I, you know what? You guys really are going to have to wonder. figure that yourself. I personally feel like it should be called a waffle board. Maybe because it looks like, a, like what you would cut bread on? Maybe. I don't or know. maybe because it's the best thing since sliced bread? Yes. You know, true fact, and I know I said it in the chat room. Waffles are just pancakes with abs. <laughs> Back in the day, circuits were often constructed by wiretapping components onto nails driven into flat pieces of wood that resembled breadboards. Bread oh, there you go. Oh, there so you go. So it's like an, an homage to the old days. <laughs> yes. Okay. A lot I like of stuff it. is. A lot of stuff is. <laughs> all right, Sasha, we should head over to the newsroom. I know we're, you know, I'm using up all your time tonight. I know, right? Move we're having fun, over. though, right? That's, are we having fun? We're having a blast. Having I actually right. really love episodes like this where I can... Um, I can learn from the beginning. What I think that the the <laughs> viewers need to know too is that I'm learning. This right. is like an experience for me. Like sure. I'm learning as we go and as we as we grow, and and I'm learning stuff like how to how to do this, and I love it. Like the soldering episode. Yeah, and it's so it's basic good. for yeah. somebody who knows how to do this stuff, but for somebody who's never done electronics in their life, I've been a computer guy all my life, and now to understand it. And becoming more and more versed at it, I'm excited to be able to fix things. I'm excited to be able to service things and replace resistors yeah. on circuit boards so that I don't have to replace an entire circuit board. Yes. It's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. 